What's going on, everybody? My name is Joe DeRosa, and I'm officially a part of the Buffalo Fanatics team. I don't know if you guys got to see the audition I had a couple weeks back on one of the more private pages, but I'm proud to say that the audition went well, and I am now officially a member of Buffalo Fanatics, and I'm very, very excited to be a part of this. I've been following the page for about Eh, roughly two and a half years now, so I've been keeping up with all of the news, and they've really been one of my major sources for you know anything news, whether it was on Instagram or whether it was on Facebook. What's going on, Sophie? And uh, it's just really, really exciting to be a part of this now. You know, I've been wanting to talk about just anything Bills related for a while. I basically keep up with them every single day, and you know, when you follow this team, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs, and it's a very big emotional roller coaster. So it's been a really fun investment being a Bills fan, and to be a part of this page is even more fun. So before I get into the meat and bones of this show slash podcast, basically just a little more background about myself. I am actually a senior journalism major at Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. Damn, that is a lot of viewers so already. Uh, senior journalism major at Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. So I just have a passion for broadcasting in general. And uh, I'm kind of catering more towards sports, but I'm also a big fan of the uh, music industry and the gaming industry. So kind of trying to apply all of that into whatever I decide to do next, but I will say that doing, you know, Facebook Lives for all of you, getting into podcasting in general is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, and I'm glad I can finally get to do it. So appreciate the love, guys. Before we get into this, I'll answer this. Shaquem Griffin, awesome. I really love watching that. Dude is a freak of nature. Um, on another hand, you know, this is a, uh, a side note. I'm not really a big fan of the combine in general, but that's something I could say for another time. But I love what he did, and I think it's just so cool. So um, let's see here. So basically, the way this show is going to work is it's really just anything Buffalo Bills related, whether it's uh, free agency options, which is actually what I'm going to be talking about today, or if it's anything talking about the draft, post-game, pre-game, whatever it is, when the Monday's at 1 p.m. that I'm going to be broadcasting, I want to talk about it. And today's show is going to be talking about free agency. But before I actually get into this, I want to do something for all of you. Because I feel like just to doing a sports talk show, you know, can get a little repetitive. So I wanted to make this thing a little bit different. So for you guys, I'm going to give you each and every week a thing called Song of the Day where I just basically find a song that I like and I share it with you. Yeah, it's not really that complicated, but what can I say? I think it'd be fun to share music with everyone in here and, you know, open up people's tastes. So now I'll get on that and I'll post the link to that a little bit later in the show. But for now, we're going to talk free agency. So that bring back Sammy comment, I'm going to get to that a little bit later because I, I do want to talk about wide receivers and I, I have something to say about that as well as wide receivers in general. But Basically, we all know that Buffalo Bills this upcoming season have quite limited cap space, and it's important that, you know, they hit well in the draft because, let's be honest, we really don't know how many picks this team is going to have in the draft. If they decide to trade up for a quarterback, obviously our draft capital is very low. Should they stay in place, we have a lot of picks and a lot of positions we need to fill. Now, I, I don't know if any of you saw the audition, but I'm a believer that the Bills should trade up to go get that quarterback because I just believe in the idea of having a franchise quarterback. Specifically, my options are Josh Rosen or um, Baker Mayfield. I'm not a big Darnold fan. I'm not a big Josh Allen fan, but I think those other two are just really good. And I also really like Lamar Jackson. I don't think he'd be a top 10 trade up though. I don't think we should do that if we were thinking Lamar Jackson. I don't think that's the plan. I really do think Rosen or Mayfield are in the Bills' sights. So because they might do this trade, obviously draft pick would be low, making free agency way more valuable. So to talk about some of the positions that <laughs> Peterman will lead us to the Super Bowl. I like that comment. Uh, <laughs> so some of the positions that I think we need to address are defensive tackle, wide receiver, quarterback, and linebacker. So a couple of options for defensive tackle. Now, this is a name I've seen thrown around a lot. And I think it is interesting to talk about just because of this player's connections with McDermott and Bean, as well as his past success and his role in the Bills' defense. And as we all know, the Bills need help on the defensive front with both stopping the run and being a quality pass rush. But this, you know, everyone I've seen to find on this list is more for the sake of stopping the run. You know, I looked at statistics, but I think they're a little misleading. I really do think this team needs more speedy tacklers and just people that are able to stop any runs. And one of the people that that have been thrown around are Star Lutulele. And he had a few good years, but recently he's been kind of on a decline, specifically as a run stuffer. His numbers haven't been stellar, and he just really hasn't been as dominant in the run game as he used to be. Personally, though, I believe that if he came to Buffalo, 
it would be something a little more beneficial to put him in a new environment with his old defensive coach. And I really would like to see how that experiment will work out. But my concern with Star Wutu lately is, given that he's had success in the past and given that he's come for this you know, defensive regime like Carolina, I think he's going to want a little more money than people are projecting. And I'm just not sure if Buffalo is going to be willing to pay a lot for someone who would more than likely be a one-year stopgap option, especially if we're trading up in the draft and they need someone long-term. They're going to try to go cheaper. It just makes too much sense to try and go cheaper when you know that in the future you're going to have to rebuild draft picks. And I just don't see Star Wars Tulele being worth the money. So another option, and this is a cheaper option, something I've been talking about that I think would be good for the Bills to get. However, even though he's cheaper, it doesn't mean he's really lacking in quality. His role would be, in my opinion, solely for stopping the run. That's Bo Allen from the Eagles. Now, my one concern with Bo Allen, however, is even though he's a good run stuffer and he'd be a rotational guy, take some of the stress off the D-line, would he want more money because his team did just win a Super Bowl? And I know a lot of people think, well, you know, it's based on your position. It's based on how you perform. But to say you came on and you came – you know, to this team and you were performing and you just basically, you, you got, you got a ring. And I think that, you know, just saying that you're on the team that just won the Super Bowl is enticing in terms of getting more money for a team that you might go to. I mean, you know, for people who I'd be keep mentioning Nick Foles, you know, even though he was a backup quarterback and he ended up, you know, being the Super Bowl MVP, we have to remember that Nick Foles isn't exactly a top 10 quarterback either, but Eagles are going to treat him like he's way more than that because he just won them a ring. And I think that's interesting that, you know, that complex, that kind of God complex comes in when it comes to contracts. So I'm not 100% sure if that would actually happen with Bo Allen. I think it would be more so he's, you know, a cheap option that Buffalo needs. And I think, you know, because the price tag isn't going to be too high, he'll go for it and he'll just will end up signing him maybe to one, two years. But I would really like to see him as opposed to start with Tulele because I think Bo Allen could just be cheaper and probably give you the same production, maybe even better. So moving on. Um, this is an unlikely option, but I decided to throw some in there just for talking points. Sheldon Richardson. Um, Seattle really wants him back, and he's going to want a lot of money, and I think he fits in there. I mean, if we had some sort of way to go finesse him, I would love to get it, but I really don't think that Sheldon Richardson is an option, personally. I think he's a little out of our league, but someone who I do think is in our league is Dontari Poe. And Ontario Poe, even though he has injury concerns, I think would be the perfect person to get for a one-year stopgap option. I mean, dude's great at stopping the run. He improved his play when he was in Atlanta as opposed to his bad year in Kansas City. I just think he'd be good for the Bills to at least look at and consider bringing in. You know, he's a good clubhouse guy, and I just think he would be a lot of fun to have on this team and really aid in the run game as well. Now, Justin Ellis, another young run stuffer, interior lineman, but he's going to want a lot of money, and I don't think the Bills are going for anyone expensive in free agency. You just saw the contract they gave Devontae Davis, and that was pennies compared to what some other people want. And I just don't think that they're going to really try to dish out the cash for you know these types of players. So, again, another expensive option that I want to talk about, Daquan Jones from the Titans, and the Titans really want him back as well, and he's going to be warranting a lot of money too. So I just don't think that the Bills are going to go for it. But in my opinion, Poe, Lutulele, those people I think are really your best bets, or Bo Allen, I think those three guys are probably the most likely DT options. And if the Bills, you know, decide to trade up in the draft, then I think they would be very valuable to bring in. But if they stay put, then I'm all for drafting defensive tackle at 21 or 22. All right, guys, here we are. It's the wide receiver talk, everyone's favorite point of discussion. So one thing I would say is that I'm not a big fan of the wide receiver class in free agency and in the draft. I think there's talent for sure. I mean, every draft is going to bring you, you know, your stud players, but not as much as years past. In the draft, I mean, you got Calvin Ridley, James Washington, among others, and, you know, those are good names, but I just don't see anything past the first five picks being crazy good. In free agency, it's kind of a similar situation. You have some good receivers out there uh, just in free agency, but I don't think that any of them are stellar names, except the one name that everyone loves that I will refer to is Mr. Sammy Watkins. Now, Sammy Watkins is interesting because I've been a firm believer in Sammy Watkins. I think he gets a bad rep personally, even including injuries and everything going on. See, we have to remember, in his first two years, Sammy Watkins had a mixture of E.J. Manuel, who would rather throw to the other team's secondary than our own receivers, throwing to him in the first half of the season, and then Kyle Orton, Uncle Rico himself, throwing to him, and he still managed to rack up over 900 yards. In the second year, he did miss a few games, and that's very true, but he also still had 1,000 yards. He still had 1,000 yards, and he was a huge contributor in that deep threat. So 
you see him in the third year and he has his injury struggles. His foot wasn't right, and I get it. That's very frustrating for fans who want more out of Watkins. But my whole thing is, when Watkins went to L.A., he obviously was healthy the entire year, and he didn't really have stellar numbers. But you got to understand, people know who Sammy Watkins is. He's been in the league for three years, and when that dude is healthy, he is one of the best deep threats in the league. So, of course, teams are going to try to double cover him and take him out of the game plan. That's, like, simple, especially when he's healthy. So in L.A., you have a multitude of threats. You have guys like Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, RIP. I miss you so much. Please come back. I know he won't. Sammy Watkins, and you guys – you know, I mean, if you want to count him, Tavon Austin. But then you got, you know, Todd Gurley out the backfield too. So when you're playing LA's offense, you have to game plan very well for them because they have a lot of weapons. And in my opinion, you don't want Goff just chucking it up deep every single time if you have guys like Cup covered or if you have guys like Woods covered. So in my opinion, Sammy Watkins had bad production because teams were just game planning for him specifically. And I mean, you know, obviously they were trying to stop Gurley too, but to me, it just seems more likely that Sammy Watkins lost production because he was just one of many threats on that team and you wouldn't want to get rid of your deep threat. So if Sammy came back to Buffalo, in my opinion, I think he would produce very well, especially if we do manage to draft that franchise potential quarterback with either Rosen, Mayfield, or if we decide to sit and wait for Jackson. I think having Watkins elevates his receiver core times a million, especially if you have Kelvin Benjamin and Zay Jones in the slot. I think he just gives you another threat to worry about if you're playing this offense. And then it allows for guys like Kelvin Benjamin, it allows for Charles Clay, even McCoy out the backfield, if you want to keep him cadet to make plays. And then when Watkins gets open, you throw to him. So I don't know exactly if he's going to be a cheap option or if he's going to be expensive. And, you know, obviously that's cause for concern because I'm seeing a lot of people say that Watkins might be, you know, you know a little more – little more money and we obviously aren't going to try to spend big in free agency and I agree with that so my hope is that Sammy kind of comes in on more of a prove it deal we kind of see what he's capable of maybe give him a year and just see what he can do and if he just stays healthy and elevates that receiving core then you sign him long term and unfortunately I don't know if Watkins is going to want to do that I think Watkins probably knows his worth more than a lot of people you know claim to know it but we'll see what happens with him I would really like Watkins to come back to Buffalo. I think it would be a great move for this team, and it would just really be nice to have a combination of Watkins and Kelvin Benjamin. I think, you know, two years ago that would have made my mouth water, and even now I still think that would be really cool to see happen in Buffalo. So we also talk about another free agent option who, uh, you know, played for the Bills and is about to get possibly cut or re-signed, and that's Jordan Matthews. And Jordan Matthews is interesting because, again, I think he got a little too much of a bad rep, and I think he produced pretty well before he got hurt, and he's a quality slot receiver, but do we really need him is the question. And, you know, we were kind of trying to compensate for the fact that Sammy was gone by bringing him in, Then we drafted Zay Jones, and obviously, you know, we were just trying to move, you know, trying to move Darby when we got Matthews in return. I don't know if we need to bring him back personally, but he would not be a lot of money considering his past season. And, you know, with this, his past year, it was underwhelming. The numbers were underwhelming. His production was underwhelming, and he got hurt. And I get it. But the Bills weren't exactly a pass-savvy team, so can you really blame him when, you know, Tyrod had trouble getting the ball out or, you know, we were focusing on the run. They just – or the run game was – or, sorry, passing attack was very short. To me, it seems like Jordan Matthews would work better if he had more around him, and I'm just not sure if Buffalo is where he needs to be for that. But if Buffalo did decide to bring him back, I wouldn't be against it. I mean, he'd be relatively cheap, and if you know he decided to want more money, then he can go to some team that needs him more. And I noticed someone said Allen Robinson. That's a big haul, and I'm just not sure if that's realistic. Allen Robinson's great, but one thing we have to remember is he is coming off a torn ACL, and I get it. Like torn ACL isn't exactly, you know. You know, in this day and age, it's able to you're able to come back from a torn ACL. But to me, I think Allen Robinson is a lot of money, and I just I think it's going to be cost too much to get him. And I'm just not a you know, with someone who just came off a major injury, and you know, is a big part of that Jaguars passing attack. And I just don't see it happening personally. I would see that Jacksonville tries to get him back before we would go for him. I think we're trying to be frugal in terms of you know this year's free agency, and just because we have the draft coming up. So, a Rob. Not 100% sure. If he did somehow come to Buffalo and the deal worked out, it would be awesome because Allen Robinson is great when he's healthy. I just think it's a little bit of a question mark right now. So another option, not too expensive, a little bit past his prime, but a deep threat just in case we want to put someone in, you know, just rotational is Dante Moncrief. I like the idea of bringing Moncrief to Buffalo. I don't think he would be too expensive. I think he's the perfect fit for this team where you just get another deep threat that someone, um, you know, Another deep threat that we could just, you know, whoever we draft as a quarterback could work with. 
And I just like the idea of Moncrief running down deep field. I still, I still, excuse me. I think he still has it. I think he's still a quality player. He's not what he was a few years ago, but I think Moncrief would be a good addition for Buffalo and he would be relatively inexpensive. So I'd keep my eyes out for him because I would really like it if he came here. Um, a deep threat option that I think would be a bit expensive, but we could still talk about him. It's Marquise Lee. Marquise Lee is very talented. I really, um, I really enjoy his production. I really enjoy what he's done in Jacksonville the past few years. But I think, you know, he's at a point where he's proven his worth and he's going to want a lot more money and more mo money than Buffalo is capable of giving him. So I don't really think any Jacksonville receivers, whether it's him or whether it's Allen Robinson, would be in Buffalo. I think they'd be great fits, personally. If there was a way to secure that deal, you know, then go for it. But I just personally, I'm trying to be realistic and think that this team has a direction of being cheap and free agency. So to me, it just makes more sense to kind of go for those options like a Moncrief or maybe like a one-year Sammy Watkins because those guys to me seem more realistic than bringing in Allen Robinson, who even though he got hurt, you know, doesn't really it, – it's still going to want a lot of money. He's not going to be cheap, basically. So those fans are going to like this name. Uh, Jeremy Macklin. So very disappointing year. Uh, very disappointing year for Jeremy Macklin in Baltimore. You know, he was considering coming to Buffalo. Shady tried recruiting him. Obviously didn't want to budge. Maybe they didn't give him enough money. Maybe they lowballed him. Who knows? He ends up signing in Baltimore. And as we all know, we made the playoffs and Baltimore didn't, which I think is hilarious. It's kind of karma. But, um, I don't know. I think Jeremy Macklin getting cut's interesting, though, because, I mean, you know, he realizes now that Buffalo is a playoff team, and maybe they will reach out their hand and give him a cheap option, and maybe he still wants to play, and he ends up coming to Buffalo. And I definitely think he would be a cheap option, and he would just, you know, fit well in this offense. I think whoever ends up being our quarterback would like to have another weapon in the passing game, and I think Macklin would provide that very well. And, yeah. You know, at this point in his career, I don't think he has a lot of leverage anymore. You know, maybe when he came off Kansas City, he had a little bit more because you can make the case with, like, Alex Smith being Buns that year and just not giving him the ball. But when he went to Baltimore, you obviously saw that he just did not produce. And, I mean, a part of that has to do with Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco has been terrible the past few years, in my opinion. I just – I'm not a big Flacco fan. I used to like him a lot more, but he just, you know, injury concerns and just his ability to move the ball has just declined over his career. So I think, you know, you can make a case for Macklin that that's been an issue. But still, I just think he's declining as a receiver, and he would just take, you know, a cheaper option coming into Buffalo or wherever team he ends up going. I think he's a good option for the Bills, though. I think we should at least consider bringing in Macklin. And another cheap option, another deep threat, but we'd probably end up getting in a bidding war with the team that wants to keep him is Paul Richardson. I like Paul Richardson. I think he's a tad bit underrated. I think he's a good deep threat, and he's got great hands and a lot of speed, but he's a big part of Seattle's passing attack, too. And as we all know, Seattle has really, really – outside of Doug Baldwin, limited receiving options. And I mean, yeah, Jimmy Graham, but Jimmy Graham didn't even wake up in their passing game until recently. So, I mean, Paul Richardson might command a decent amount of money, but I don't think he would be anything too expensive. And I think, you know, no, he would know his worth coming to Buffalo. So I don't know if it's likely, especially with Seattle wanting him too. But if he managed to come to Buffalo, he'd be a sick deep threat, and I would really like having him in the passing game personally. So Anquan, no, I'm just kidding. We're not putting Anquan Bolden on this team. And real quick rant, I'm just really, really happy that we kind of made him eat it. Uh, that's just, ah, oh, that was so satisfying. I think that was one of the first things I thought about when I found out the Bills were going to the playoffs was Anquan Bolden is not on this team and serves him right. You know, the dude had a chance to play for the team. He had a chance to come in the regular season and help the passing game, but he decided to put himself in retirement and give some sort of pseudo reason to why he didn't want to play anymore. And now. He is sitting on his couch, and the Bills just made the playoffs. I mean, yeah, they didn't go far in the playoffs, obviously, but the fact that the team still made it without your help is saying something. And, you know, it's, it's just nice that, you know, when that happened over the summertime, you know, me being a Bills fan at a school that's in New England, I got roasted for it, and I completely get it. You know, my team, they just signed this guy, and he ended up retiring, and it just became this big mess. But real talk. He wasn't on the team, and they still made the playoffs. So it's a great story, and I'm very, very happy that Anquan Bolden can eat it. And to whoever said it before, not 12 years old, appreciate it, though. All right. I hope you're ready. I'm talking about quarterbacks. This is going to be interesting because the quarterback market is mainly Vikings, but there's also some other options. So let's talk about some of the veteran options. So we have Mr. Sammy Biscuits himself, Sam Bradford. And Sam Bradford is – just so hard to read because he's basically made of glass bones and paper skin. He is a 
quarterback who was projected to do so well in the NFL had, you know, minimum to just terrible offensive lines in his career and ended up getting hurt because of it, even though he had injury concerns in college. I think better offensive protection would have really aided him in not getting hurt as much as he has. And it's been on every team he's been on, which is just so unfortunate for Sam, uh, for Sam Bradford. And, you know, uh, St. Louis at the time when he was there, O-line was terrible. In Philadelphia, it just didn't work out. In Minnesota, it's the same thing. But that being said, when Sam Bradford is healthy, I'm a big fan of his game. I actually think he's the perfect game-managing quarterback. He doesn't have the best arm, and we all know it. But in a team like this, I think we'd be able to survive with Bradford if he was healthy, just being a game manager. I think he would really fit the role. I think he's a good leader as a quarterback when he is healthy. And you've seen him. When he is healthy, he can actually elevate a team. I mean, we, you just watched him go into Foxborough uh, as the starting quarterback for the Eagles and end up beating the Patriots in July. Like, that's – to me, that's crazy, and that's still one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. But I think Sam Bradford would be a good option because he would be cheap, and if we managed to keep him healthy, we'd get good production out of him. And, I mean, with the idea of signing Sam Bradford, I don't think that's stopping you from drafting a quarterback, but I think it's just giving you the idea that, you know, you have this veteran. If your uh, quarterback isn't ready, whoever you decide to draft, you can turn to Bradford, let Bradford do his thing, and if Bradford gets hurt, then the rookie has to be thrown into the fire. And, I mean, you know, if – we don't end up signing Bradford. That happens anyway. So why not give him a little cushion and let the guy develop behind him? But I'm not sure how likely it is. I'm not sure where Sam Bradford's going to go. I think he could end up in Buffalo next year, but we're going to have to wait and see on that one. It's really a matter of how much money he wants. And, I mean, in his one starting year with Minnesota, they obviously didn't make the playoffs. I don't know if I blame him. They had a really bad injury bug that year, including most of his offensive line. But with the rise of Case Keenum, it kind of brought Bradford's value down, in my opinion. So we'll see what happens with that. And speaking of Case Keenum, yeah, <laughs> so this is interesting. He's going to want a lot of money, and I understand why. You know, his team just went to the NFC Championship. He, you know, just took them there. Even though they didn't win it, he had a really good year. But we have to remember a few things about Case Keenum. One, he had Pat Shermer, and Pat Shermer is a great offensive coordinator and probably made him way better than he looked. Two, while he has good pocket presence, Case Keenum isn't exactly the most accurate quarterback. And three, he had Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Kyle Rudolph. Now, take Kyle Rudolph out of it, but Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs are great receivers, and I think that definitely helped Case Keenum out a lot because, you know, anyone could be better when you have just better receiving talent around you. So to me, Case Keenum wanting a pretty penny, I don't know how justified it is. Now, let's say in the hypothetical that he does end up coming to Buffalo on a rather cheap deal. Good. You would have to put a receiver around him. So if they actually have enough money in the cap to do it based on what Keenum wants or what Watkins wants, I would say bring them both in. Because then putting Keenum in a game where he has Benjamin, where he has Clay, where he has a possible Watkins, Zay Jones, I think he could actually do well in that system. Now, I'm not 100% familiar with how Dable runs his offense. So to me, it's just uh, I'm not so sure if he would fit here. I'm seeing people saying some of the teams that he could end up going to. These are all just options, by the way. I'm not saying any of this is likely or anything. But Case Keenum, to me, would be interesting in Buffalo if he has the receiving talent to back him up. If you just bring him in and don't bring a walk-ins and don't end up drafting a receiver, then I just think it's a total dud, and I don't think he's going to do well at all. Um, Shout-out to Jeff Fisher. He's trash. I know that's just a random side note, but Case Keenum and Nick Foles in the Super Bowl was really funny to watch, knowing that Jeff Fisher was probably pissed off watching it. So, um, another option, I don't think this is likely to. I think he's ending up in Cleveland. I've seen reports saying that Cleveland really wants to sign him. A.J. McCarron, and we all know he's unproven. I get it. He didn't really start that many games. In Andy Dalton's absence, they did end up going to the playoffs, but that was more Dalton than it was McCarron. In that one game, they should have won, unless, you know, you want to get specific. I really do think since he should have won that game, but, of course, Adam Jones and Vontaze Perfect being the two wonderful human beings they are ended up costing Cincinnati that game, and A.J. McCarron didn't get that playoff win, which probably would have boosted his resume a lot more. Now, I think A.J. McCarron's a good pocket passer. I think he would work well on this team, but I don't think he's going to end up signing here. I think Cleveland just wants him more than Buffalo does. It's straight up. like I think Cleveland's going to give him more money, and they're going to give him more of you know certainty that he would end up being like the starting quarterback, because I don't know if Cleveland wants to throw another rookie quarterback in the fire right away, no matter who they draft, whether it's a Josh Allen, whether it's Sam Darnold, whether they decide to go Baker or Josh Rosen, you know. I think the Deshaun Kaiser experiment failed miserably, and I think they're kind of in the mindset that they need to just be a little more patient and just kind of wait and just, you know, not put a rookie in and let a veteran take over. So for them, I think Adrian McCarron would be a good fit, and I think 
Cleveland is definitely the destination for AJ McCarron. But yes, I agree with the comment where the agency class isn't great. Honestly, free agency this year isn't as big of a splash as it's been in years past, and we don't really have a lot of options. But I think cheap quarterback options, you know, you can never really go wrong with just having a veteran to kind of train your rookies. And I think, you know, in the off chance that the rookie's not ready, it's good to have the guy who's been in the NFL before go out there and lead your team. Now, uh, a lot of people talk about Teddy Bridgewater, too. Not the biggest Bridgewater fan. I don't think he would work well in Buffalo. I think he's got the arm strength. I think, you know, you're kind of getting a slightly modified, maybe enhanced version of Tyron Taylor. But I just think Bridgewater's been out of the game a long time. And that injury was non-contact. And that's a big concern for me. So, Bridgewater, while he's had success in the past, I don't think is warranting of a very big contract. And I'm a little fearful that, you know, if he wants to come to Buffalo, that he's going to want a lot of money. So I'm just not behind the Bridgewater train. I know some people are, but I don't really think we should go after him. And I see someone saying, is Andy Dalton an option? Probably not. Like, I love the man. He's the reason the Bills are in the play were in the playoffs. But I think the Bengals are planning on keeping the Red Rocket in their – you know, and their offense for years to come. And, I mean, he's not the best quarterback in the world, but if he was in Buffalo, I think he would do fairly well. Now, we're going to move on to linebacker. And, you know, this is another position that, to me, isn't exactly the most prolific in, you know, the well, in the free agency, I should say. In the draft, there's plenty of linebacking talent. But in free agency, there's nothing really crazy here. But I saw the name Navarro Bowman mentioned, and, yes, I have him on this list. Um, I think that's a gimme at this point. And I see, you know, uh like beat reporters and everyone just saying that he's linked to Buffalo and that he should end up coming to Buffalo and that, you know, people are going to want him here. But uh, I just, I, if he's, if he commands the right price, if he's cheap enough, which he's older, I think he's 32 years old now. So if he's cheap enough, I would take him because he's a great running, uh, run stuffing linebacker. I think we need him. I just think the run game needs what it can get. And I think Bowman on a one year deal, maybe even two years, if you have the money to do it, depending on what you do in free agency, um, I think it would be good fit in Buffalo. I would like to have him. And uh, I know we wanted to get him last year, but the Raiders ended up going for him. So I would like to see Navarro Bowman in, on Buffalo next season. Now, uh, Nigel Bradham is an interesting name because a former Bill worked well in Jim Schwartz's system and then went to Philly, and he's been doing well there. I say if he, again, I think the Philadelphia ring bias might make him want more money than he's actually worth. He's a good linebacker, but, you know, when you, you look at, you know, just like his production in Philly, I think he's going to want a lot more money. And I don't know if Buffalo is willing to give that to him, but I'd like to see Nigel Braddon back on the Bills too. Um, I think he would just help the front seven tremendously. And I just really liked him when he was in Schwartz's scheme. So I'd like to see him back, but I'm not sure. Um, actually, fun fact, I don't know. Is Zach Brown a free agent or not? Because I thought he was still uh, under contract in Washington for a couple more years. But Zach Brown was awesome in Buffalo. I agree with that. Zach Brown was the man. Um, I loved him and Preston together. I love that duo. I really love Zach Brown's ability just in both sides. I think he was just a really versatile linebacker, in my opinion. Obviously, disagree with that. So, speaking of Preston Brown, I know we all saw the report about him talking about New England as an option. I know we all don't know what he's going to want money-wise, but he's he's so split in my mind. And here's the thing. Like, he led the league in tackles, and that's great. You know, that's wonderful. And tackle all the people, but he's also – not the fastest linebacker. And I don't know. I feel like that money needs to be warranted to other things. And there's a lot of linebacker depth in the draft. So to me, it's not really a terrible thing if Preston Brown decides to walk away and go to a different team. And I'm a little more concerned with the fact of how much money he's going to want from Buffalo. Um, how much he's going to want from Buffalo, given that they know they need him in the defense. And I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned he's going to want too much and he's going to end up pricing himself out just like people are saying EJ Gaines is pricing himself out and why he's not a likely option to come back. So for me, personally, I'm leaning on – I'm on the fence about it, but I'm leaning more towards Preston Brown going to a different team and we just end up saving the cap space for other needs and then drafting a linebacker in whatever rounds we end up preserving should we trade for a quarterback in the draft. And my whole line of thinking is I, I'm, I'm very – invested with the idea that this team is very future heavy right now i think they're trying to get out from under the contracts that they put themselves into or potential contracts they might you know be warranted from players that were in rex's scheme that were in you know jim schwartz's scheme back in the day i think they're going to want to you know just bring in guys under their own accord so i think the big price free agents guys like preston brown that are going to want a lot of money are going to end up walking and you're going to end up seeing more guys that just mcdermott and Bean believe in so to me 
if you had to ask me if I think it's likely Preston Brown's coming back, sure, but I don't know if it's 100% guaranteed. I do think he could find himself, I hate to say this, but in New England because New England is basically just – they're basically hovering, like if this is our shoulder, they're right on top of it, kind of whispering in our ear that they're going to steal all of our free agents. It doesn't always work out, though, you guys. you got to remember, Mike Gillisley had a down year, and I don't think he fits there at all. So you never know how Preston Brown would work there. But Preston Brown's more of a 3-4 linebacker anyway, so I wish this wasn't an option, but I really don't want to see Preston Brown in New England, I do think it might happen, though, if he doesn't sign in Buffalo. I'm not sure what other teams have been looking at him. I don't, I'm not aware of teams that need linebacker support. So, I mean, you could, you could write that in the comments, whatever you're feeling. But personally, I don't think Preston Brown is worth too much money. I don't think Buffalo wants to give him that much money. If he's willing to work out a contract where he could come back for relatively cheap, that'd be cool. But I don't think he's going to do that. I just, I think he, you know, he knows he led the league in tackles and the way he's been talking. It sounds like he's trying to, you know, finagle us out of more money. But this is a team that doesn't have a lot of cap space. And it's really unfortunate because free agency is a fun time of the year. We all want to see them bring in every position filled and they just, you know, bring in the right guy for the job, spend as much money as they can. But we don't have that cap space. Next year will be better for us, but this year it's tight. And my problem is, you know, you think about all these players that are fan favorites, but you kind of have to weigh in the fan favoritism with, you know, the logic behind it. And that's like the case with Preston Brown is, is he someone that's worth the money? Can you get over your bias to say this dude's honestly worth the money? And while he's producing the NFL, I think we just need to get younger and we need to invest that linebacker position in the draft. Now, um, I brought up EJ Gaines before. I would love it if EJ Gaines came back with Vontae, with Tredavious White, and with Hyde and Poyer all in the secondary together. I don't know how likely it is again. He wants a lot of money, but the dude has also been hurt so much. So I think he's pricing himself not just out of Buffalo, but out of a lot of other teams as well. I think, you know, people are going to look at his past season and say how many times he's been injured. You know, how consistently has he walked off the field from rolling around in pain on the floor? Like, he obviously wasn't fully healthy pretty much at any point during the year. And EJ Gaines, while great when he's healthy in Buffalo, just he wasn't consistent enough. So to me, signing Vontae was more of a replacement idea. Vontae Davis has the same risk of injury, but you're getting him for way cheaper. And when he's healthy, he has the same level of production as EJ Gaines does. So I'm just not sure if EJ Gaines is worth bringing back. I'd like to see him back in Buffalo. I'd like to see any of these free agents back in Buffalo. But to me, EJ Gaines, I think, is going to find himself in some other secondary needy team. So one thing I want to address that I didn't, I forgot to address before, my notes here. We were talking about receivers, and there was one person who was the most unrealistic thing in the world. So I'm going to ask all of you, who do you think is the most unrealistic free agent that you would love to see in Buffalo? Give me any name you can think of and any reasoning for it, because I'd love to hear this. But for me, mine is Jimmy Graham. I would freaking love it if Jimmy Graham came to Buffalo. And I get it. Like, he's, he's injury prone. Like, you could say what you want about him. But could you just imagine that dude in Buffalo, healthy, producing in this offense? I think he would be so sick in the red zone. I think he would work really well here. I think they would find ways to get the ball to him because they know how good he is. And it would just be so much fun to have Jimmy Graham in the red, white, and blue. And, I, you know, I've always been a Jimmy Graham fan. I honestly was so shocked when the Saints traded him a few years back. It just seemed like a really silly move because it didn't end up working out for, you know, Seattle in the beginning. Like, yeah, he's had some production in Seattle, but he's nowhere near the level he was in New Orleans, at least in my opinion. So for me, it's like if he were to somehow end up becoming cheaper in free agency and came to Buffalo, that would be so much fun to have him in the offense. So I don't know. I mean, I would love to see Jimmy Graham in Buffalo personally, but it's not going to happen. There's, there's no way that can happen. And if it does, then I will – I will eat my shirt. I will eat my Bill shirt. It's okay because I'm waiting for the Fanatics one anyway. But <laughs> Jimmy Graham would be awesome. Um, I can't really think. I mean, I would love Allen Robinson too. If that was possible, you know, if they're willing to dish out the cash for him, you know, he decides he doesn't want that big contract in Jacksonville and, you know, Buffalo can give him a deal that works for both sides. That'd be dope because Allen Robinson's a freak when he's healthy. But I'm not 100% sure if he's going to find himself in Buffalo again. I don't think it's realistic at all. So, yes. So that's basically the end of my list for free agents that I at least think are worthwhile coming to Buffalo or just some options to throw around. To me, as I mentioned before, I think it's really important that they hit the you know nail on the head with Hammer in the free agent market because there's a lot of holes they need to fill on this team, like way too many. And the problem is, you know, it's a tough it's a tough call because when you need a quarterback, when you need your Josh Rosen, when you need your franchise guy, you have to give up a lot for him. And it sucks because when you give up all this capital, you're ended up 
costing yourself all the stuff that every position you need, defensive tackle, even running back, receiver, uh, you know, whatever this team needs, they're going to end up costing that just to go get their quarterback, and it's going to take them a couple years to build up. And, I mean, I trust the process. I believe in the future. But as fans, we want to see a winning product on the field. So when free agency comes around, you want to see, you know, these big-name players come to Buffalo. But that obviously can't happen uh, this year with the tight draft – or with the tight, excuse me, salary cap. So – when you're giving up all these picks, you have to be right in free agency since you have such a limited salary cap. So this is a really, really trying test for Brandon Bean, in my opinion. Brandon Bean is going to be looking at free agency carefully. He's going to have to make the right call. He's going to have to bring in the right position players, and he's going to have to make the right contracts. He knows that he doesn't have a lot of money to work with. He knows that he wants a quarterback, and if they don't sit at 21 and 22 and they trade up, he knows he's not going to have a lot of draft capital, and there's not going to be a lot of picks and a lot of new players coming to Buffalo. So, you know, what do you do in this situation? Do you find yourself, you know, thinking, I'm a, I'm a little too afraid of trading up when I know that we have so much to fill? I'm going to stay at 21, 22. I'm going to stay with my, you know, heavy draft. Or do you decide it's worth it to get your guy in the, in the draft, your quarterback, and I'll trade up and then just go for free agency and do the best I can. Personally, this is this is tough. I believe in either option. I believe that you know going for that quarterback would have been cool, but uh, I, it's such a risk because at 21 and 22 and all of their draft capital, they could get so much. But I mean, I've seen some fanatics post say that you know you. You know, the Bills really don't take risks on quarterbacks in the draft, and I'd like to see them do that this year. And I just think Josh Rosen is incredible. I'm a Josh Rosen fan boy. So, to me, I, I think it's worth trading up and hopefully getting him. I really hope they get him. So, now I'm going to read some of these. So, let me see here. Chris Ivory. Oh, I forgot about Chris Ivory. Yeah, that's actually extremely likely. Uh, you know, I, I would love to have him in Buffalo. I think he's going to be extremely cheap and an awesome third down back behind McCoy. Anybody but Tolbert. <laughs> anybody but Mike Tolbert, for the love of God, please. He's a great guy, awesome dude in the clubhouse, and he had his share of, like, I love that the likes start following him when I mentioned Mike Tolbert, but he's an awesome guy to have in the locker room, but uh, it just didn't work with him, and I'm, I'm really sad because, like, because Mike Tolbert is just such a good dude, and I hate hating on people that are nice guys, but, like, if I saw one more second and 20 run <laughs> with Mike Tolbert, and he only gets like a yard. I'm, I was planning on having a stroke at the age of 21. And believe me, I don't want to do that. So anybody but Tolbert, bring in a Chris Ivory. Bring in, you know, a cheap third down back. I think there are so many options that are better. Bring in your Jonathan Stewart, whoever it has to be. But just please, no more Tolbert. Thank you. So let me see. Imagine White, Ramsey, Poyer, and Hyde. So, okay. If Jalen Ramsey was a free agent, <laughs> then yeah, that'd be sick. God know is there is that happening, but that'd be hilarious, and I would love to see that because no one would ever throw the ball more than ten yards. Jalen Ramsey is an absolute beast, though. Telvin Smith too. Yeah, Telvin Smith is also a beast. I agree with that. I really love the idea of you know an elite linebacker in this team, but we don't have that right now. So I'm thinking more so the linebacker is going to be a draft position, but I would love to see Telvin Smith here as well, and that would be the best secondary in the league. Tober is so. I'm sorry, like I feel so bad for saying it because I really like Mike Tolbert as a person, but I just can't, I just can't get over. You, you, and you know what? That is a good point. You know, T Tolbert, he wasn't used right, I guess, and he did have his share of good carries in the season. But we also have to remember he's really bad at ball handling. He had a couple of close calls or even fumbles, and I did not like that about his game. Disregard the fact that he was used on second and twenty. When that dude would be put in a situation where he was set up to succeed, I feel like he either would underachieve and only get a couple of yards or end up fumbling or, you know, very rarely would he actually get the production we wanted out of him. And, yeah, I don't think Mike Tolbert fits in Buffalo. So that's what I'm saying. If he finds a team that can use him well, great. You know, power to him. But he's just not a, he's not a fit in this offense, in my opinion. Um, Nick Foles. For the right price, yeah, sure. I think Nick Foles would be great on this team if he if we got him cheap enough. But to me, I don't know how likely it is. Um, again, like I talked about before, uh, Philly might want a pretty penny for him, especially since he was the Super Bowl MVP. So it's a little bit of a gamble. Um, if they were like they only wanted one of the 21 and 22 or something like that maybe, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to want a lot of money for him. All right, you guys. My laptop is about to die, so I hope you enjoyed this free agency talk on the show. I'm going to be back next week with more. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for responding, and thank you for you know listening to me for 40 minutes rambling on about free agency. 
It has been an absolute blast, and I look forward to doing more for Buffalo Fanatics. You guys have been great. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get to everybody either, but um, let me put your song in the comments because I think it's important that we share music here. So let's go. CRX. Enter. Yeah, my computer's fan is, like, heated up right now. So, yeah. I appreciate it for coming, guys. Thank you so much for listening to me. I hope I did a good job, and I will see you all very soon. Let's go, Bills. And for Buffalo Fanatics, I'm Joe DeRosa. Take care. Bye.